Every major Android update brings a ton of cool new features. But are you really using all those features? There are some hidden Android features that don't get the attention they deserve. Hi guys, this is Rupesh from Bebom.com and today I'm talking about some really useful Android features that you're not using, but you definitely should. So let's get started. Android Beam is one hidden gem in Android that not many people are aware of. And it's been here since Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich. Yes, it's been that long. The feature lets you share links, videos, photos, etc. from one Android device to another using NFC and Bluetooth. So obviously your device does need to have NFC for this to work. If it does, you'll first have to head to settings and tap on more in the wireless and network section. Here enable NFC and then enable Android Beam. We'll also have to enable it on the device you want to share data with. Then just press the devices back to the other device which will pair both the devices through NFC. Then just tap on the display to beam whatever is on your screen. It is important to note that this only works if the other device is unlocked. Also make sure that the other device is on the home screen. Otherwise Android Beam gets confused on which device is sharing the data. Android Beam is certainly a handy feature if you're just looking to quickly share a picture, a YouTube video, an app from the Play Store, etc. We'd not recommend it for larger files though. Next up is the screen pinning feature that was introduced in Android Lollipop. This is a pretty handy feature not many people know about. You must have been through a situation where your friend asks for your phone to make a phone call. And after he's done with the call, he starts messing with your phone, reading chats and checking out private photos. It is annoying, right? Well, that's where screen pinning comes in handy. Screen pinning makes sure that a user stays on a single app. What it basically does is, it pins a specific app on your phone, which means a user can only use that particular app and will not be able to open any other app. Even the home, back and the recents button become unresponsive. To enable screen pinning, go to settings, security, and enable screen pinning. Now just open the app you want to pin. Then tap on the recents button and you should find a pin icon in the bottom right corner of the app card. Tap on the pin icon and the app will be pinned. To unpin the app, you just have to long press the back button. If you happen to own a smartphone that packs in 8 or 16 gigs of internal storage, you know that's not enough. Well, you can insert an SD card if your device does support it. But even that's not a perfect solution considering not all apps can be installed on in external storage. And even the app data is only saved in the internal storage. Thankfully, Android 6.0 introduced the adoptable storage feature, which lets you format an external micro SD card as internal storage. Before you do this, do make sure to back up the data on the card, because it will be erased in the process. To do this, first make sure the SD card is inserted in the device, then head to settings, storage and USB. Here you'll find your card listed in the portable storage section. Tap on it and then hit the three dot menu button and tap on settings. Here you'll find the option format as internal. Tap on it, then hit the erase and format button. The process will then begin. And if there is any data on the card, you will get a prompt to move it now or later. Once the data is moved, your SD card will work as internal storage. That is pretty handy. It is always a hassle when a single Android device is used by multiple people. Each person has their own online accounts and interest in games and apps. Thankfully, Android lets you create multiple user accounts or profiles. Android tablets have had this feature from Android 4.2, but it only arrived on smartphones with Android 5.0 Lollipop. So let's see how you can add a new user account in your Android device. First head to settings and then go to users. Here tap on add user. Then. Tap on setup now when prompted, after which you will be taken to the new user account where you can add the accounts and install apps. You can switch between users through quick settings in the notification shade. And if a user has set up a lock, you'll have to enter the pattern, pin or password to access the account. Another security feature that you probably aren't using on your Android smartphone is smart lock. Smart lock introduced with Android 5.0 Lollipop automatically unlocks your phone when your device is around some trusted agent like your Android smartwatch, Chromebook, your house or maybe in your pocket. 
This is certainly handy if you want your device to be unlocked in some specific situations. To enable it, go to settings, then security, and in the security page, tap on trusted agents and enable smart lock. If the option is grayed out, it means you haven't added a pin or a pattern lock. Set a lock first and then enable the option. To set your trusted agents, go to settings, security, and tap on smart lock. Here you'll find all the options to set up different agents like places, devices, voice, etc. You can just set up a trusted agent and your device will be automatically unlocked when it is in the proximity of one of the agents. The first app that most people download on their new Android device is a file manager app. But not many people know that Android 6.0 includes a hidden built-in file manager and it has gotten even better with Android 7.0 NuGet. You can access the file manager in storage settings where you'll find the explore button at the bottom which brings up the file manager. The file manager features a side menu which lets you browse from your images, videos, audios, recent files etc. You can also check your Google Drive files and directories like downloads and documents. The file manager also supports multiple windows, different views along with all the basic file managerial features like moving files, renaming them, creating new folders etc. While the file manager might not cut it when it comes to advanced features, it's still a great file manager if you're looking to do basic tasks. All in all, it's a great addition to stock Android and it's a shame that it is buried in the settings page. If you've thought about printing documents, pictures or anything else from your Android smartphone, you must have noticed that it's a little complicated. Well, actually, it's pretty easy thanks to Google Cloud Print. However, you'll first have to set things up. First, you'll have to add the printer to Cloud Print from your Mac or Windows PC. Firstly, make sure that the printer is connected to your PC or Mac over the same network. Then go to Google Chrome and open up Settings. Inside the Settings page, scroll down and click Show Advanced Settings. Then click Manage under the Google Cloud Print subheading. You will then see the printers that are connected to Cloud Print, if any, along with the option to add new printers. Click Add Printer. The printers that are connected to the same Wi-Fi network as you and available to be registered will be listed. Select the printer you want to connect and click Add New Printer. Once done, the printer will be automatically added to your Google account and you will see it on your Android device as well. Do make sure that the printer is added through the same Google account that you use on your Android device because only then the printer will be synced with your device. Now you can just hit print on your Android device and print anything you want. It's only a one-time setup and the print option from your Android phone will work even if your Mac or PC is turned off. Next up is the Daydream feature on Android. And no, we are not talking about the new Daydream VR platform. However, you can check out our video on Daydream VR if you're more interested in that. The Daydream we are talking about has been part of Android since Jelly Bean. And with NuGet, it has been renamed Screensaver, which is more apt. For instance, you can set a clock Daydream to turn your smartphone into a night clock when it is docked. Sounds cool, right? You can find the Screensaver or Daydream option in Settings Display page. Here you can set up a screensaver, when to start the screensaver and test it. You can also download various screensaver apps from the Play Store. Do check out our article on the same from the link in the description below. Also, you can check out our videos on Android gestures and Android shortcuts to know some more cool tricks on Android. Well, that is all when it comes to lesser known Android features. But if you know of any other hidden Android feature, do let us know in the comment section below. Also, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. Well, that's me signing off. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.